communication is just such a big part of it. And if it's properly tracked, you have less communication. And if you have great ways of communication, it will be easier to keep track, basically. So one thing needs the other. This is the Self-Recording Band Podcast, the show where we help you make exciting records on your own, wherever you are, DIY style. Let's go. Hello and welcome to the Self-Recording Band Podcast. I am your host, Benedict Hein, and I'm here with my friend and co-host, Malcolm Owen Flood. Hello, buddy. How are you? I'm great, man. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Um, just had the most mm, disappointing experience ever, but I'm still good <laughs> because I was like, um, I don't know if it's the same in Canada or in the US or whatever you're listening, but when like they try to deliver you something you've ordered or something that somebody sent you, and you're not home, they leave a note, mm. and then you grab that note, go to the post office, and get your thing. Is it the same where you are? Probably. Uh, yeah, sometimes they leave it at, at your house, and sometimes they don't. And I'm currently waiting with bated breath for a delivery that's meant to show up today that I need for later today. Oh, that's and, the worst. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very worried that it's going to show up and I get, like, I'll be, you know, maybe recording this episode in my soundproof studio and not hear them show up. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. really hope that they just leave it. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, that's the worst. Yeah, and, and like, and my distressor, my favorite piece of gear on this planet, um, has been away since... End of November 2019, I think. So right. I had it to say, I had it, um, I had to send it to the US to for it to get repaired, and it was a huge pain in the ass. I sent it to a workshop here in Germany where I ordered ordered it like to a shop. They couldn't repair it, but they told me super late that they couldn't repair it and that they had to send it to the US. And when they did, it was already like Corona, and like they sent it over. And then of course, yeah, it was like it took forever for it to come back. And now I got um, the, the the shipping notification that it should arrive today or tomorrow or yesterday, this week, sometime, sometime this week. And I'm so excited and can't wait to get my distressor back. So yesterday I came to the studio and there was this note um, here and I thought, yes, the distressor is back. And today <laughs> I go to the post office, fully excited to grab my distressor. I didn't order anything, so it must have been the distressor. And then I received the thing that was there and it was just like invoices and receipts that uh, from my accountant that I got back like after he was oh. doing my taxes so just all my stuff back to me that's not so, fun no so the, the worst thing uh you could grab from the post office and I was so disappointed and my distress is still not here but uh. other than that I'm fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah man distressors are really cool pieces of gear it's the best yeah they're fun totally I need to get a second one but yeah I don't know. I need to get one. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I need to get one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't it's, own one, but I, I do want one. Yeah, totally. It's one of those things I don't track enough for to justify having a lot of hardware, actually. But the distressor is one of those things that I just love. Even if the arouser plugin and everything is great, but the distressor is just the distressor. It's not the same. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't actually enjoy the arouser that much. I heard really? so much good stuff about it, and I was like, eh, it's whatever. But <laughs> when I've used a, a hardware distressor every single time, I've loved it. Yes. Every single time. Same same here. I, I like the arouser, but not as much as the hardware. And the arouser doesn't have the opto mode, and I love the opto mode on the real thing. Right. So anyway, a whole other topic. Um, <laughs> but yeah, what, what were you up to? I mean, we've talked not long ago. We do, we've done an extra episode this week, but... Yeah, um, I was mixing some bands and, and I got a master in yesterday as well. So just uh, stuck in the studio, getting stuff done. And it went awesome. It was one of those days where things just like flowed and songs went out. People were really happy, done. So loved it. And then, uh, uh, yeah, other than that, I, like I said, I'm going out on a film gig today, later this afternoon, hopefully with my new gear. <laughs> That's meant to come in the mail. <laughs> I'll, I'll be fine without it, uh, but I really want it. <laughs> okay. It would be yeah. nice to have it. Um, but yeah, so back in the, the field on that stuff as well, which would be great. Super great. Yeah, we can only hope it stays that way. Like, it stays open. I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced yet, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, for now, it's good. Awesome. Yeah, then um, let's dive in today, into today's topic. And it is about keeping track of your progress. So track your progress while you're recording, while you're writing, doing pre-production, whatever you do. It's really, really important. Uh, I guess the people that are making that documentary with you, uh, talking about that, I guess they keep track of it. I mean, 
if they wouldn't, they like it would be chaos probably. So if you have a project yes. like that, you need to know where you're at and where you have been a couple of weeks or months ago. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like years in this case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So they do it, and you should do the same, even if it's just working on one song. It is a project, and it requires you to stay on top of it and to know what's next. And you shouldn't have to waste mental energy on thinking what what actually to do and what's already been done and who needs to do what and stuff like that. So that's what we want to talk about. Yeah, this is uh, hugely underrated. Non-organized people don't see the value in organization. I used to be one of them. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me did, too. All through high school, you know, they give you like agendas to fill out and you're like, why? Like, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like, you just tell me where to go anyways. <laughs> yeah. Um, but unfortunately, when you graduate, uh, there's nobody telling you where you're meant to be next and you have to keep track of it on your own. Um, and this totally applies to the studio recording. You'll find that when you're not organized and you don't have that like charted out in like an easy to reference spot, it takes longer to get to the next step. <laughs> you oh, yeah. kind of dither around on the same step longer. Um, and when I started implementing just little studio boards into my workflow, things started moving quicker just, just by doing this one thing, the, the record sped up a lot. Um, so yeah, I can't really recommend it enough. And we're going to talk about what that looks like. Oh yeah, totally. And it's funny that, what you just said that the the act of just making that cross or crossing th- something off or just doing making a check mark or whatever that's i don't know that's somewhat like satisfying or it's just fun and you just move on faster because you want to do that like it's it's rewarding to do that it's the same mm-hmm. with like if you track your i for example i started tracking my habits a couple of weeks ago so i read a couple of books and i started like things that i wanted to do every day that i had written down as like habits i want to to start or to learn or to really be part of my day. As long as I just had them in the back of my head, I, I, I knew about them, but I wasn't as consistent. Once I started tracking things and making a cross like every day, I didn't want that line that, that then like got created. I didn't want to it to have a hole in there. I didn't want to break that line, you know, that, that, that right. progress. So once you start keeping track of something, um, it's just fun to move on and to check something off and to know that you have done everything so far that you've always showed up and I don't know it's it's weird it's like different than just knowing it and yeah thinking about it yeah and in the case of being a band you need this because it's not just your you don't just need it in your head you need it in the head of all of the other bandmates involved all the other musicians Um, and the only way to do that I think is to have something visual that everybody can glance at so the most classic approach is like a literal poster board on a wall uh, or like a whiteboard. So something fairly large that everybody can see in the studio, right? Um, and that's my favorite still, even though we're going to talk about some digital methods that make way more sense, especially in COVID times. But uh, just grab, uh, like, the, yeah, the, the classic would be grab a whiteboard or a poster board and kind of draw it into a grid. You have songs going one way and instruments going the other way. And then when you finish something, you just fill in that box for that song and instrument and tick, 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 knock it all off kind of thing. And what this does is allows anybody at any time just to glance up and see where you are at in the process of your album. And that does a lot because now everybody's on the same page. Everybody knows where they're at. So the urgency is kind of matched among all people. Um, you can see if you miss something or you can kind of see if you have to start thinking about setting up for a new instrument, you know, like, okay, almost all the drum boxes are ticked on. So-and-so is working on the last drum track right now. Maybe I should start getting ready for guitars kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's another cool yeah. benefit of this is you have it set up and you'll notice that whoever's next starts practicing a little sooner. <laughs> oh yeah, to- yeah, totally. And and just the sheer fact that you won't forget things. I mean, mm-hmm. sometimes it's just like you save something for later or you, like I've been in situations where we knew we could do it now, but if we do it now, there's the, the chance that we would like um, kill the voice of the singer, basically, if it's something really high or really loud or a, a very difficult scream. Like you could mm-hmm. do that now, but it's, yeah, there's the, the risk of like blowing out the, the, the voice. And so we save that for later. But if you do that, you could finish the song and forget that you didn't do this thing, you know? So yeah. if you, do, so don't, check off things until they're done and with the poster board solution you can just easily see if a, th- if a song's complete or not given that like um, only if you of course um, 
write it down properly and know all the elements in the song. So you need to put in some thought there. Definitely. Oh, sorry. There's uh, somebody knocking on my door. <laughs> Did you read it? No, no. Did you see it? I just held into the camera. Wait a second. Oh, I think my eyes were off the camera. Oh, yes. <laughs> I called it. <laughs> Distressor back in action. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Um, yeah, okay. Um, my distressor just came during the, <laughs> during the episode. No joke. Uh, yeah, it's there and I'm happy. <laughs> That's great. Okay, I'm going to... Keep an ear out for my delivery now. It seems like a sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Uh, that's wicked. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. We were with the poster board. Don't forget things. It's just like you can for forget what you haven't done, and you need to put some thought into uh, writing it down properly, so that obviously all the elements are on that poster board. So only then yes. it makes sense. Yeah. So the the kind of rows and columns thing will be very vague, like this song, this instrument. But what you can do is inside those blocks is write specific notes. Um, and I really love doing that with because people have ideas on the go, you know. So there's going to be like ideas that aren't already internalized by all of whoever's playing it. But you're like, okay, well maybe we want to try a banjo on this song. And nobody plays a banjo, so we have to remember that, and we have to source a banjo player. So I'll go into like my little. I always keep an other category. Um, where it's just like not any of the instruments that are planned for and it's other ideas and I just write in there banjo kind of thing and every time we look at the board I'll be like right I still have to find a banjo player (laughs) (laughs) and uh, (laughs) yeah so stuff like that you know or like gang shouts claps whatever Um, you know write any idea you think of that isn't already internalized onto that list yeah and that that is handy so when you did this, Benny? Did you just like shade in the boxes, or did you uh, draw funny photos in the boxes? What did you do? <laughs> I saw, I saw your uh, your note that you wrote down there, and just it's totally true. I, um, I myself usually just check things off or just make a cross or whatever. But uh, it's a totally fun, a total fun idea, a fun thing to do with bands to make them first of all let them do it themselves, and then. Uh, instead of like a cross, let them draw in whatever they want and those poster boards yeah. end up being crazy p- pieces of art. <laughs> the Very end fun. of a project. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like this, exactly. Malcolm's just I'm, showing me I'm one. I'm holding up one. Yeah, and it's a, it's a classic, classic male band poster. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Usually... There's beer I'm, cans, hammers. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised there's no dick on there. Like, <laughs> like that's usually yeah. somewhere... If if we're honest, there are breasts, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, there's a penis. Yeah, yeah. that seems to be common. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, you you let them fill in their own squares, and it's something they get to do when they finish their their part on a song. So it's kind of like an incentivization. You know, they feel like they're making progress that way as well. And you know, every once in a while, there's somebody that's just like, why am I doing this? But like, yeah. I don't care. Just do it. It's for everyone else. Yeah, and, to- uh, yeah totally. <laughs> totally. But it just makes it more fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I would do. I would totally do that. It's a fun thing to do. And um, also, like, there are people, even if it's not about the, the drawing in pictures, but there will always be people who are like, I can remember the stuff I, I don't need to write this down and I was the same for a long time actually I always thought this stuff like this is stupid and it's just a waste of time but you you just eventually you will forget stuff and also you'll be you'll be faster if you do it that way because every time you need to stop and think what's next or that like just thinking about what you have done and what hasn't been done yet and stuff like that if you do that 10 times a day it adds up and it's like you could waste a half an hour or an hour of your time every day just mm-hmm. thinking about what you need to do, which is a total waste. So even if you can remember things, it's just faster if you don't need to use your brain for that. Yeah, and it's it's actually, it takes more time than you'd think because it's not just you thinking about what's next. It's you having a conversation with everybody about what's next. Oh, you yeah. all have to ask and then talk about it and like it just takes so much time where this you just look and you don't have to ask anybody there's no conversation you're eliminating like 10 conversations a day just by having a piece of paper on the wall oh totally and like oh, yeah and exactly and if if you're like you are maybe let's say you're the drummer of the band and you record you are the one operating the DAW and you're recording the rest and then your guitar player is next to you and he's supposed to play his parts then he if it's if there's not this poster board or something like visible 
for everybody, he will constantly ask you what's next. He will mm -hmm. constantly ask which song are we doing, which part are we doing, are we doing this again, do we need to do doubles, whatever. You get these questions all the time, and, and like you can totally eliminate that by having something there that they can just see all the times. So yeah, um, well, it is awesome having all of this like out on a poster board, um, and, and uh, again, I think totally crucial. I still will eventually recommend doing uh, like a reference lesson of everything as as a group, hopefully, um, because new ideas will pop up. Or, or maybe issues, you know, you have to double check your work every once in a while. And norm, like, if you did a good job, there won't be any of that. But the, the new ideas, and again, I have that other category where we just write in extra notes for stuff um, for other instruments or even for instruments we've already done. Maybe you want to add more vocal layers or something. Do a listen of the song and just update your board periodically. Yeah, absolutely. Do it. Um Check it, double check it, because sometimes ideas pop up that you haven't written down on the board or... Yeah, agreed. Definitely. Nothing more to say to this, yeah. So I have a question here. When you listen to those th songs periodically to check the progress and you have an idea that wasn't there before or you want to add a layer or something, but you, you can't do it now, you don't have it right next to you, the thing you want to use, or <clears throat> it's just an mm. idea that pops in your head, another instrument, another vocal or whatever... Do you add it to the poster board then, or do you make a note somewhere, or how do you make, how do you keep track of, of, of things like that? I do add it to the poster board. Um, again, it might be like so if it was something that I could get back to easily enough. So say it was just like a vocal overdub, and the vocalist is still available, uh, or I it can be any vocalist. I'll probably just write that in the vocal box kind of thing or something. Um, but if it's something that I, we're going to have to come back to at a later date, I throw it in the other box. So the other box is normally for instruments that aren't included in, in any of the other rows. But uh, in this case, it's like, okay, we've already done guitars, but we do want to add some weird delay swells with a guitar. I'm going to put that in there. And then I really like to have an auxiliary day, I call it, where at the end of the album, we come back for one more day. <laughs> yeah. So everything's done, but then we come back and we just like run through each song. This is where we'll do a, a reference listen and be like, is there anything else that would just add a little bit of magic? And we just hit all of those kind of things, um, whatever we can. So I'm doing one uh, later before my film gig after this podcast. I'm just going to add some tambourine to a song. <laughs> you know, that, yeah. was, that was the result of it. It was like, okay, just needs a lift on the last course. Tambo, here we go. Um, so yeah, I just make a note and we'll hit it eventually. Okay, cool. So... One thing that's, I think, important here is no matter what method you use, and I think the poster board is pretty much like mandatory almost, you just need to do that, but um, there are other things that we're going to talk about, but no matter how mm -hmm. you keep track, I think it's important to keep it all organized in a way that you can see it at all times, so that's the board on the wall, on the wall. but also on your computer, it's like you probably go, or you definitely go through various stages and phases you have you, you write a song you make changes to the arrangement you um do demos pre-production it gets refined like until you get to the point where you actually record it and sometimes you need to go back to something and change something and also it's just important that when you come back after a while that you haven't been at the computer and you open your folder for the song or for the project or the, the record or whatever that you see immediately what you have done and what you haven't done and what where the songs are. And uh, so I would highly encourage you that after every session that you do or after every step that you make, that you do a save as or make a copy of the session or whatever and label it with the date and what you've done so that you can see like song one, writing and the date or whatever, or song two, pre-pro, round two or something. Just so you know what stage the songs are in and what there's still left to do. Because that's I, I I don't think I know a single person who did this right from the beginning. Like everyone I know who's worked in some way, shape, or form on a on a song, they labeled their projects in the beginning with like I don't know what's the default name of any DAW. Like it's the same thing as, as they label their tracks audio one two a thousand and thirty one. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like they label their projects and their folders in basically they don't label them at all it's just weird numbers and and letters and it doesn't make sense and basically everybody does that in the beginning until they realize how important it is to actually be organized so yeah just do it right away because eventually you will do that anyway because it will annoy you <laughs> so yeah. start right away keep track of everything by simply by just labeling it properly and every time you open the folder you know 
what file is what and where you are. Yeah, there's like two things to think about there. Uh, one is what is that organization going to look like? Like, are you going to write like I think like you do, Benny, where you would say pre-pro editing, you know, drums, guitars, bass, st- stuff like that. Or like in my case, I I just use a date system. Um, I'm thinking about adapting a little bit of yours, like, but I would still keep the date on there. And yeah. I just do like I do. For example, today is the 13th, so I would do 200813. So that 20 stands for 2020, uh, and then it's the month, and then it's the day. And that always keeps things like alphabetical in a way, you know, uh, it's numbers, but <laughs> it, it lines them up so that my most recent session's at the top always, and that, that's kind of useful for my workflow. But the most important thing, whatever you decide to do, is that you are consistent and you use it for every single save because you just need to know that when you look in any folder, and there's going to be a lot of folders on your computer by the end of this, that you understand the order of them and which one is what you're meant to be looking at. So just don't start doing something and then change it. Like, I mean, it's a, if you got to adapt, you got to adapt. But the, the consistency is really key to not confusing yourself in the future. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Do that. Um, be consistent with it. That's that's key with everything. If you want, if you miss, if you start missing things like that, it's even harder to go back and get organized again. It's the same thing. Like if you're always saving your downloads in the downloads folder, if you do that for a while, it's it gets like a, it's a real task to clean that up. And the same is if you don't label your stuff properly, if you don't do save as, and it's, all of a sudden you have like 15 projects not labeled properly, it's it's really hard to get around to doing that and like uh, reorganizing everything. Whereas if you just do it every single time, it's not a problem at all. It's, it requires little to no effort, basically. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, uh, let's talk about some yeah. some tools. Uh, okay, so there are two kinds of tools. I would say there's this, there's the tools that you just use to track progress. Same as with the poster board. So you could share a spreadsheet. Like Google Sheets for is perfect for that because Google Sheets is everybody basically has a Google account these days. Everybody with a an Android device has one by default, and everybody else just I think almost everyone has a Google account. And Google yep. Sheets is free. It's in there. It's like Excel, but for, um, like made by Google. If you haven't used it, it's great. Um, it lives in your browser. I don't know if there's an app for it on the phone. There's an app, but oh, there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the phone, there is, but not on the not on the computer, as far as I know. Yeah, you can share a spreadsheet there where you can just um, yeah come up with whatever system you want to track, be it the what Malcolm said, like instruments and songs, or you could do. I've seen that from like actual clients of mine and, and students in my beta program where they had like this huge chart where they had, um, okay, here's the songs and this is what we still need to do. So they had all the phases like uh, drum programming, guitar arrangement, vocal layers, all that stuff was in there in the writing phase. Then there was like a new yeah, chart basically where they had um, the that demo phase and then the feedback loops and all that. Like they had it out, spread out over this, this sheet in a really detailed way. So you could use... Google Sheets, and everybody can look at it and knows exactly uh, what to do when. You can even, I think, you can like integrate it with a calendar. So if there's a task or something that right. needs, still needs to be done, you can give it a date and put it in the calendar. Like all, all that stuff can be done with that. So that's a pretty basic and free one, but it works perfectly fine, I think. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Google Sheets is awesome. Um, but I, personally... Don't really like the Google universe, <laughs> yeah. So I choose to avoid it whenever I can, um, and I like more visual things rather than spreadsheets. So I think my favorite overall project management tool is an app called Trello, which I I know that you use as well, Benny. Um, it is less of a spreadsheet and more of just like a poster board, I guess. Um, but it is very cool. If you haven't used Trello, you got to check it out. It is free in most cases. I've been using it for like two years for free. Um, and it is this very visual list-based graphic poster board kind of thing where you just grab cards on one list and you drag it onto another. Um, and it's awesome. <laughs> Simple, beautiful, and easy. Totally. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, exactly. Free. It's a very visual thing. It's like the, the idea is like if you had post-its on your wall and you have columns basically, of, mm-hmm. of things you, you need to do. And you write one um, one thing that you want to move through this pipeline is what they, what you can call it. Uh, you write those things on a post-it and then you just move the post-it from column to column. 
That's what Trello yep. is. So you could have one column or one like list for every instrument and then write on a card, like on a post-it, the song name, and then you just drag the song uh, the song, yeah, the song from one instrument column to the next. So you can start yeah. with drums, and then guitars, obviously, then bass, then <laughs> vocals, and then everything else. And um, so, yeah, and then you can you can move the songs through this pipeline until they are done. And yeah. it's uh, yeah, it, you can share it. I I don't know how many users you have free with Trello. If you can have a whole band and a Trello board, I don't know. Oh right, as far as members, that's a good question. Um, I have never tried more than one, yeah. so. But even Not if sure, but yeah. But even if you have just one account and you have it in the studio or the practice room next to you, where everybody can look yeah. at it, that's also good. Um, you can share the URL to the board unlimited. I know that, so that you'd be able to people would be able to reference it, maybe not update it. Okay, cool. Yeah, but Trello for the band and every, like I think I think everybody has a use case for Trello. It's just such an amazing tool, even in your personal life. Like Trello is just awesome. Yes, you know? yeah, get Trello. I think as musicians, like a lot of creatives, listen to this podcast, and this is gonna when you get it, you're gonna be like, this is what I was looking for. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how I felt. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's one tool. And then there's another category of tools that I um, I think there is and that's important. And that's like collaboration or communication tools. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily for checking off things or moving things through the, the process, but just to assign tasks or um, like going back and forth, like leaving questions on a certain thing like in an organized way, having threads instead of just an ongoing, I don't know, messenger conversation or stuff like that, because that's the worst. Every band has like a, I don't know, a WhatsApp chat or a messenger, Facebook messenger chat or something like that. And it's, it's like, it's a not, it's an less than ideal way to do things and to work together on a project because you will not find things anymore. You have to search all the time. It's not organized. So if you have a tool where you can assign ta tasks to individual people, where you can comment on things, where you can have a thread, where you can separate things uh, and have separate tasks for and separate threads for separate tasks, it's so much easier because then you like you are like oh I have a questions for the drums in this song and then you mm -hmm. just open up the thread for that song and the drums and then you can leave your comment there or you know th like stuff like that so it's it's so much better to have like a tool like that and one uh, that you can you can use is a very simple one that is not as like sophisticated but you can set it up yourself kind of that way is if you could use Dropbox Paper mm -hmm. because. It's not like there's this pre-made tool where everything's so organized, but you can organize it yourself. And if someone leaves a comment, you see the name of the person, you can have like bullet points. And if you comment below a certain bullet point, it's there and you see who commented, you can edit stuff. So it's basically like a document that's that looks great, that's easy to edit, where you can find things, you can search for things, you can have it in a certain order. And almost everybody has a Dropbox account at this point. So that's a very yeah basic version of that, just a document things and to have all the info on a, on a project in there yeah 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 we use dropbox paper for this podcast actually it's yeah. how we organize everything we've got checklists in it and we have all our topic ideas and all of that so every time we record it we've got it open and we're using it it works great if you don't have a shared dropbox folder for your band you're missing out <laughs> yeah <laughs> just have that and then every time you bounce the latest version of the song it automatically goes to this folder and everybody in the band automatically gets it and can reference it and that'll save you a lot of time because you won't have five different band members emailing you asking for the latest bounce every day. They can just go and get it themselves. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, and don't use Google Drive. <laughs> yes. It's just like it's the worst. Dropbox is so much better. I'm with you. Like, I like the Google universe for everything but Google Drive. I think their office is actually great. I think their calendar is great. So I, no complaints. Gmail is great. No complaints with Google stuff except for Google Drive. Google Drive is... The bane of my existence. I hate clients <laughs> for using Google Drive. <laughs> um, like I have, I've seen a post some like some time ago where I think it was Kurt Ballou. Some, I think it was Kurt Ballou, but I'm, I'm not sure on that one. But at least he commented on the thread. But I think it was his where he posted a, a screenshot of a client who sent him like a Google Drive folder to mix his stuff or whatever the Google Drive folder with the the multi tracks, and he just he was like. Sending someone a Google Drive link or like a, a link to a zip folder or something on Google Drive 
it's like a, a personal like insult. So he, yeah. he really takes that personally if he gets something like that. Because if you click on that, you never know what happens. First, it like compresses or uncompresses stuff. It, it takes forever. Then it like, uh, if the person who sent the link forgets to make it public or whatever, you can't even download it. And then the download will stop and you have to start it over again and all sorts of weird things happen. So Google Drive is just the worst. <laughs> <laughs> it is straight up awful. It is yeah. like <laughs> whenever you send something to somebody yeah. on Google Drive, you are like deliberately taking up time of their life. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, totally. So don't use that. Use Dropbox instead. So easy, so simple. Works great. And um, yeah, have a shared Dropbox. Uh, that's basic stuff, but basically uh, you need to have one. Um, yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, I've, yeah, I was going to say WeTransfer is another great one to, to quickly send stuff, but it's not an automatic file structure uh, solution. So Dropbox trumps it in my mind, but I, I'm not offended when people send me WeTransfers. No, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's that's fine. Especially like the WeTransfer Pro that some people have where the links don't expire and stuff like that. That's the yeah, best. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So yeah, Dropbox, Dropbox Paper, more sophisticated tools to work together, mm-hmm. to collaborate. There's something called Asana, I hope I pronounced that right, but I think so. Um, yeah, it's a tool. We use that with my band where you can have, I think, 15 up to 15 members and you have this workspace that you share where you can have um, tasks, you can assign tasks to people or people to tasks, you can uh, hold yourself accountable, you can integrate calendars, you can um, comment, you can send files. I think you have unlimited storage with a limit for an addition for an individual file size, I think, but overall unlimited storage. Um, yeah, it's a really great collaboration tool, and it's free, the basic version, and it's more than enough for a small team like a band. You could use it for a business, basically, if you're not more than 15 people in the business. So it's really awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. Look into yeah. that. That's a recommendation right there. Slack. We haven't. We, ha- we don't have that on our list here, but Slack can also be great. It's like a, a yeah yeah chat. Um, thing with threads, comments, file sharing. Not like not as suited for project management, I guess, but good for communication. Yep. Yeah, and communication is important, I think. Um, I, w- I think more bands should do that because you don't need to have one messenger thread going for everything going on in the band. You could have one thread, like a forum kind of style thread going on for your merch ideas and another for shows and another for rehearsals, you know, and that would make it way more organized. Yeah, totally. And that all has to do with keeping track of your progress, by the way. So we, we are like, it, it sounds like we're talking about different things now, but it's all part of that because everybody needs to know at all times what has already been done and what is yet to do. And communication is just such a big part of it. And if it's properly tracked, you have you have less communication. And if you have great ways of communication, it will be easier to just... Um, to keep track, basically. So one thing needs the other. So it's like you can't really track your progress if it's if it's too hard to find something in a chat or um, mm-hmm. if you don't even want to ask a question because it's all such, so complicated and unorganized. So, yeah. Totally. Uh, something we've started using recently, Benny and I, is an app called Marco Polo, which is a pretty cool little app. It's like a video chat app that you just send video memos to each other. Um but the people can watch it or rewatch it whenever they want. Uh, I don't know. It's just like, I think it's quicker to send because I think just talking into a microphone is a quick way to communicate. I guess it's not really quicker to receive. <laughs> so you got to listen to it. Um, but it, it, I don't know. It, it's like a, a more real connection. I'm enjoying it so far. Pretty, pretty new to it, but I know a lot of people are, are loving it and it's growing pretty quick. So it might be worth a sh- giving it a shot um, because <laughs> actually in bands, things get lost in translation pretty often in, in text messages. <laughs> yep. So uh, Marco Polo eliminates that possibility. Totally. It, like you have, if, as soon as you see someone's face when they say something, it, you, you perceive it completely differently. Uh, and when, you, when, it's, when you're talking about keeping track of things, um, just a few bullet points maybe something because you're in a rush, maybe something even spelled wrong or something like that in a chat can lead to confusion and like or things taking something the wrong way. And just a quick message with an app like that totally eliminates that and this comes across in a completely different way. And also mm. what I, at first I didn't understand the advantage compared to any other messenger because you could always send videos. The, the difference is you just click, you just hit the record button and you talk and then you stop and that's it. You don't have to upload a video 
or you don't have to wait until it's uploaded. It just just picks up the upload again when you lose connection and stuff like that. You don't have mm-hmm. to do anything other than like click the record button and stop it. And the other person can watch in real time or later, depending on the internet connection. But it's super easy, super quick, um, and it's it's a great communication tool, really. So I also recommend it, uh, and it's fun. Yeah. And that's also part of keeping track of the of the progress. Um, it should be fun because the the more organized you are, and um, the simpler this stuff is, the more you are like excited to get the project done. You are excited to move on. As soon as you lose track, as soon as you're not sure what, what's left to do, how long it will take, how much you've already achieved, as soon as that happens, it starts to get a little frustrating. People lose motivation. And we've talked about it a lot, but making a record should be fun and you should be excited for the next step and for what's to come. And that's why it's also so important, not just to not forget things, but also just to keep it exciting and to yep. keep everyone involved excited and, and ready to move on. And that only happens if everyone knows what to do and if the communication is fun. And yeah, if you're just a great team, basically. There's a dynamic that happens if, the, if it's just a great team where everyone knows what to do and everyone has their tasks and holds everyone else accountable. So yeah, that's just part of, of it. And uh, it's fun. Yeah, definitely. Okay, um, then another concept here that, uh, yeah, I just... I just started using that and I just told Malcolm about it before this episode. It's called um, alias folders on a Mac, if you're on a Mac computer. I don't know. I think that you could do the same on a PC. I don't know the name for that, but there is um, the same thing. I remember from PC days, there's the same thing. Um, It's like, what's the English word for it? A shortcut? Or um, if you make a shortcut to a folder, like a little file, a very, very small file that like... um, references a folder or like moves you to the folder and you click it. If you create those, those little shortcuts and organize them on your desktop or in some folder, um, if you make a such an alias, it's called on Mac, for every single song folder basically or every single project folder, and then you create a folder structure where you just move those shortcuts, those aliases from one folder to the other, you can basically have something like a Trello pipeline or what we do in a spreadsheet or like you could have all the stages all the phases of the project in this folder structure and just move the project forward without actually changing the actual file location the actual folder location that's important because you could just move the folders of course but if you do that it's it's very rarely a good idea to do that because like um yeah the project file files just won't be able to find the audio files anymore and it's just like leave the paths as they are leave the folders where they are the actual finds files but just move those shortcuts those aliases that's something i do for the studio i could see it used uh, being used by bands as well um yeah if someone wants to try that and comes up with cool ways to use that let us know i'd be curious because i really like i really enjoy it since i started using it yeah. Yeah. So this is really a visual organization. It's not actually organizing the files differently. Um, it is just now you have a folder that you can open on your computer and you can visually see the status of each project. Yes. And that that's the beauty for me that when I open, when I get to work each day, I open the computer, I open that one folder on the desktop, which is called Active Projects, and I immediately see what is uh, what I can do today or what, what what can be done or what needs to be done today because there will be a song and mixing phase, there will be a song and mastering phase, maybe one is in revision phase. And for you, this could mean you could have one song that you need to program drums for and another song mm-hmm. that you need to arrange vocal layers and another song where you need to get feedback on a demo or something like that. So without looking at any of those tools or spreadsheets or something, you just open your folder on your computer and you immediately see which folder is in which um, like, yeah, face or state. And um, then you know what to do and what's next. And yeah. as soon as you've completed that task, you just move it to the next one. Yeah, like when you consider the alternative, the alternative is you having to open up each of these sessions to manually check where they're at and listen and be like, oh, yeah, the drums are still wrong on this. We have to program those and then close it. Like that takes way, you know, you're saving yourself minutes, which add up to hours, which add up to days. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. This is kind of a weird episode because it's such a simple topic and there's not much to say about it really, but still it's so important. And I remember, yes. and I don't, don't know if it's the same for you, Malcolm, but I remember that I was doing it for years already with my bands and then when I started being a producer without any of this really. And it's so much easier now that I do. And like 
10 years ago, myself 10 years ago, I couldn't have handled the clients and the projects and everything that I do now at all. I'd like n- no chance that I would have yeah. would been able to, would have been able to do what I do now. And you as a band, you don't have to like juggle clients and projects, but still I know bands that are writing a full length record, but they're not writing like the 10 or 12 songs. They are writing 30 or 40 songs and then they choose 10 for the record maybe. Right. And then once you start juggling like 30 songs over the course of a year, it can get pretty confusing and complicated. So absolutely yeah. irrelevant. The project management of uh, even just one full like 12 song album or something like that is one of the kind of most challenging parts of being the producer in that role is just like managing and, and maintaining and, and keeping everybody communicating on that project for the duration of the project as well. It's like honestly just as much work as the actual recording. <laughs> yeah, totally. There's one thing, one pushback to this whole theme, to this whole topic, um, and that is don't overcomplicate things and don't mm-hmm. get lost uh, or don't make it make it even more confusing with all those tools and the keeping track of everything because... The, depending on what type of person you are there, like if you're the type that like me or like Malcolm is, we love this stuff. You know, we love these tools. We love to dive into new productivity things and organizing things. And if you're that type of person, it can be pretty dangerous, especially if the rest of your band is not, because it can be annoying for everybody else and it can be unnecessarily like uh, complicated. And um, I've seen cases where people that I work with have set up beautiful, really, really sophisticated, complicated um, spreadsheets where I was like, well, that's great, but I think you've really gone too far here because if I look at that, it will take you forever if you do it like that. Um, You've estimated way too much time for all the individual steps on that sheet. It makes the whole project seem impossible to to finish. It, if you look at a monster of a spreadsheet like that, everyone else in the band is like, we'll never get it done. It's so much work left when it actually isn't, but mm-hmm. it looks like it is. And it, it's the opposite of what it should be. It should motivate you. It should make it exciting. And it should not look exhausting and, una- and, and impossible to achieve, basically. And that can happen. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, we because we mentioned a lot of different approaches and tools and you're not meant to use all of them. Uh, <laughs> just in case there was any confusion on that. It's kind of like which one works for you. I think the poster board is kind of like a do no matter what. I think you should have a poster board and one digital system, yeah. probably. Yeah. Um, and uh, between those two, you should be good. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, maybe Yeah, that and maybe some sort of spreadsheet, depending on if you use the poster board. Um, like, I don't know, or the, the Dropbox paper or document. Like, I would have what the poster board is in the studio. I would have that in digital form just so everybody can look into it wherever they are. And then I would have some sort of digital thing where you can actually communicate and work on the project. Like, be it some, something like Asana or a Dropbox paper where you can do all of that or whatever. Yeah, but one tool yeah. to communicate digitally and one place where you can look at the progress and see it immediately. Yeah, and that might even be the same app. You know, you yeah. might find something that does both. Yeah, totally. Anything else Great. to add here? I think that is a lot of information on how to organize a project. I think so. That was good. I hope Thomas was able to like chop that up and organize it in a way that this episode makes sense <laughs> so <laughs> that you, <laughs> you can actually uh yeah, keep up with this episode and it doesn't in our um yeah, our back and forth makes sense to you. But I think it does. Yeah. And um, yeah, send us your ways that how to organize things or how you do it. People might use different things and we don't know about them. So just let us know what you do. Join the community on Facebook and let everyone know there. So if you go to the selfrecordingband.com slash community, you can join that free Facebook group and just share how you organize your files or ask people for advice. And um, I'm sure there are a lot of methods and cool tips and tricks that we are not aware of. So uh, let yeah. us know. Let's yeah, get. Yeah, we love yeah. new tools. So if you have a cool app that you're just loving, please share it on the community. <laughs> I want to see that stuff. <laughs> totally. And all the links to those tools, basically that we've been talking about, um, will be in the show notes as well. So if you go to the selfrecordingband.com um, slash twenty eight, you will find the show notes. And by the way, that works with every single episode. So you just uh, type in the selfrecordingband.com slash and then the number of the episode, and you will be forwarded to the show notes page with all the links. Awesome. All right. See you next week. Thank you for listening. Okay. Bye. Bye.